Hey guys, just making a quick video here. It's late, it's nine o'clock, Monday night. Just got all the parts hung in the spray booth. I got the, uh, rather set up in the spray booth. Got the bed taped off tonight. Um, ended up doing quite a bit of body work to these panels. So hopefully uh, um, they'll look okay when they're done. I'm gonna spray epoxy primer on any of the areas that have a little bit of body filler showing. I'm gonna epoxy primer the whole parts as it use it as a sealer um the, remember this truck's getting painted twice so if anything looks like crap after this first paint job i'll get it on the next paint job um because i'm going to spray it one more time with a little bit more color and then re-clear it as the truck is completely put together um we're going to take the bed loose and we're going to move it away from the cab the back of the cab wall and leave it on the frame so that we can just reshoot everything all in one shot. And hopefully that'll make all the satin clear match everywhere. Hopefully all the metallics will lay the same and everything will match up. So just wanted to let you know that tomorrow night I'm gonna make a video on painting these parts. I ended up having to pull that filter. It was filthy. I have to put a new filter in the spray booth tomorrow before I start painting. But they're all set up and ready to go. And then I think, fingers crossed, the parts for the 59 Impala should finally be on their way from California, the last couple parts that I'm waiting on. So as long as those show up, I'm going to be doing a couple more last videos on this car, getting it buffed out one more time and cleaned up and sending it on down the road. Um, the interior shop is ready for it. It is dusty right now, dusty and dirty, but it's okay. Um, I still have to finish the... I don't know if he's shipping out the, low, the upper moldings or not. Hopefully he is sending a new set. I still have the old ones here that need to be re-chromed. They were re-chromed and they bubbled a little bit. So they must not have gotten all the rust off the parts and it made it bubble a little bit. So I didn't put them on the car because I'm not putting a, a new re-chromed piece that has bubbles underneath the chrome. Um, so I need those, I need, um, I got the lock. I was missing the rod for the passenger interior door handle. So that when you pull the door handle, it unlatches the door. I was missing that. I did get that Friday, Thursday or Friday last week. So that's just sitting in the car. I haven't put it in yet. I have to put the vents in for the, uh, the vent hoses in that go under the dash for the defrost. I have to put those in still. I got a new hose sitting on the floor in there. Um, from California, he is sending the new cables because I only have one of the three cables or one of the four cables for the um, the vents and the fan and all that stuff under the dash. So he's bring, sending a, a kit for that so I can hook up all the cables so that all that will operate correctly. Um, I have to figure out the rear brake lights. They're not working. I have power going to the brake light switch, but I have nothing coming out of it. Um, let me go grab something real quick. I did find an original plug that'll work for the um, convertible top because I don't have that part of the harness that goes to the pump. So hopefully with that plug and I'll run new wires, we'll make a harness uh, that, got, that has to go to the convertible top switch. And then I need to put fluid in the convertible top pump it's brand new all the lines are new cylinders are new I can't remember the last time I actually did one of those so I do have the instructions I do have the bottle to bleed them and everything so I'm really going to have to kind of read the directions and go through it and I'll probably make a video on that in case anybody needs to do it and has never done it before pretty much it's going to be the first time for me as well because it's been such a long time that I absolutely do not remember how to do it um, so that needs bled so that we can get the top to go up and down once I make the wiring harness. I talked about the brake lights. I have to mess with the passenger door window some more. That's not working really well. And the passenger rear window is coming up really slowly, which means something is binding. The track is either bent or off. I need to do some adjustments and see if we can get that working good. The two windows on the driver's side work really well. Um, I think that's pretty much about it. Um, I need to wet sand, or not wet sand, I need to buff out the car really good. 
Um, oh, I need to put the wheel skirts on, which I have the hardware for that over here. Um, where did I put the hardware? On my messy bench here. Okay. These are the brackets and everything for the skirts. And we are going to uh, screw these into the bottom of the car um, rather than using clips to hold them because they are a lot harder for somebody to steal if they're screwed into the car versus um, just having a clip on the bottom or a wing nut or anything like that. Somebody can easily take them off. So I got to put those on. Um, other than that, I think that's pretty much about it. It's just a lot of cleaning and it does run, it does drive. Um, I've driven it up and down the driveway a little bit. Obviously I can't drive it any farther than that. I don't have a seat or anything. Um, the brakes need to be bled one more time. Oh, and I want to go underneath the car and touch up anything that needs touched up. Um, probably just use like a satin black spray can to touch up anything that um, I missed, you know, when I was painting under there. But uh, I think that is pretty much it. The cooling fan's working, the headlights are working, the wipers are working, the horn, the horn's not working. You're gonna have to take the steering wheel off and figure out why the horn's not working. Plus, when I turn the steering wheel, it, sound, it feels funny. Um, something's not put together right in the steering column and it feels like it's rubbing. So I need to pull all that back out, look at the uh, manual and see if they have an exploded view of how the parts go and then kind of just pull them off in a reverse order and then make sure that they're all in order when they go back on. Could be missing a, a spacer, could be missing a washer. Remember that's a different steering column than what I had in the car before because that other steering column was broke. So I had to pull this, pull that one out and put this one in from a different Impala. So, you know, something could be missed there. Um, when the car came here, all the parts inside the steering column were missing. So we'll get it figured out though. So I will probably do another video or two on this car and then I'll do a final video of a walk around because I know it's been a while. I haven't really worked on it much, probably a month because I'm seriously waiting on just some dumb parts. Um, but other than that, that should wrap it up. So if you guys are interested in seeing me finish this up and that pickup truck, like I said, I'm gonna be painting those parts tomorrow night and then um, it'll be gone. The whole thing will be gone for like a week or two and then I'll get the whole truck as assembled back here. The front cab is pretty much already all assembled. They are they're working on it right now. They have the doors are on it. I don't know if they got the front nose put on it or not, but uh, I know they were waiting to put the front nose on because they were having a power steering issue. The um, the um, the power steering box was leaking, and I know they took it down and they tried to rebuild it, but the rebuild kit they got wasn't right for the thing, so they tried to fix it and they couldn't. So I know he ordered a brand new steering box and I know they put that in, but then they were having some sort of a problem with clearance on a power steering pump that kind of like what happened on this car. So I had actually given him a couple brackets that I think might help him out because I had some extra steering brackets for a small block uh, Chevy. So hopefully that'll help him get what he needed to get his up and running. But so yeah, I'll be doing finishing that in the next couple weeks and hopefully in the next couple weeks this will be gone too. And then I, at that point I should be ready to start painting that dually, the bed, the tailgate, the tonneau cover, and the rear wheel flares. Those are all ready for paint. And the truck itself is just about ready for paint as well. I'm waiting on paint for that. Um, I did a, that spray out for the guy and he said that the pearl coat was too gold. He wants it to be a little bit more bluish looking. So when you looked at it and he moved it, it was really gold looking. And the truck was not that much, didn't have that much gold in it. Now it's called White Lightning is the GM color. And supposedly there was three or four different White Lightning colors. So clearly that one is not the right paint code. Um, so I gave him that panel because half of that panel had the original paint on it. And then the other half had the spray out that I did on it. So hopefully when he takes that back up to the paint store, he's got somebody that works at a paint store. So he's getting the paint for the truck because I guess he's getting a good deal on it. So I just need him to get the right color. If he needs me to do another spray out, I'll do another spray out. Just want to make sure it's right before I paint a pearl white truck because I really don't want to paint it twice.
So, all right, guys, thanks for watching. Any questions or comments, feel free to ask. Hit the thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it, and I'll talk to you guys later.